Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. Previously, none other than the storyteller himself took the witness stand, his real name being Arthur Cantabella. And he is the CEO of Labyrinth Incorporated. It turns out all of Labyrinthia was just a English government-backed science project to determine the effectiveness of mind-altering chemicals? Yeah, um... But even though Arthur is being very, very uh, open about all this being just one big show and magic not being real and witches not even existing, Espella, his own daughter, is dead certain that she caused the legendary fire from so many years ago. So now I think we need to prove Espello wrong and settle her mind, so let's hop back in here. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, when I woke up this morning, my throat felt really weird and it still feels weird, so I don't think I'm going to do my deep, gravelly voice for the storyteller anymore. I'll, I'll just use, like, a, a deep voice. Manfred von Karma style. Um... Right, so I do recall we left off here on this statement. We've pressed everything else, and I'm pretty dang sure I need to actually show evidence here once we press it, so let's take this from the top. The great witch Mizella awoke within me and brought calamity upon the town. Hold it! Do you remember casting a spell? I cannot remember. Okay, we actually did question the storyteller right here, but I don't think we continued from this point, so let's see what a spell has to say in full. But the town perishing in the flames so fast is engraved in my memory. That must be a very harrowing memory. I think that... Whenever Bizella takes over my body, my consciousness drifts away. But I'm sure of it. There's no mistake about me being Bizella. Because... Because Eve has always been with me. You mean that black cat? How is that relevant? According to the legend of Bizella, she is always accompanied by a black cat. That small furry animal is actually her minion. In the stories, that is. Eve was there with me, I'm sure she was. And I saw the town engulfed in flames. These memories are causing her a lot of pain. Espella, hang in there. Hmm. Okay, let's go back and press that again, and this time we'll question the storyteller. So do you, like, think Arthur, like, picked out his own costume, or did he have some folk design it for him, or what? <laughs> Hang on! You look upset, Mr. Cantabella. Ah. Uh. Pardon me. Do you want something? I'd like to know what you think about Espella's last statement. My opinion about all this has not changed since last time. It's all just a dream. Listen to me, Espella. You are not Bezella. There was no legendary fire. Dad, you have no idea how much I want to believe you, but I just can't. I remember what I saw, and how it felt, the heat, the smoke. Magic doesn't exist. It belongs in fairy tales. There are no fire dragons either. Espella seems certain that she saw a fire dragon at that time. However, as long as we do not have any evidence to support or disprove this claim... We can't make any progress. Huh. Do I have any relevant evidence? 
anything that could demonstrate that the fire dragon Nispilla saw as a child was real. I have no idea what else to do, so yeah. Your Honor. What is it, Defender? The defense will present evidence. Evidence? I suppose you mean evidence that will prove that my daughter's memories of the dragon amount to nothing more than wild imagination. On the contrary, I'm pretty positive Espella did see the dragon. What? What? I thought you had more sense than you. Well, well, aren't we all curious about what the defense has got to show us? Present evidence that proves a dragon appeared in this town over ten years ago. Um... Okay, maybe it could be like Espella was convinced she saw it, but what she saw wasn't what she thought it was? Like, we got this sketch. We got this sketch in the same uh, cross-examination session right here. And then we could double back and uh, press this again to get to this point. Like, obviously, if we could get through this question right here with what we had, we would never have had the opportunity to get this sketch in the first place. Therefore, this has to be the correct answer here, right? Like, maybe Phoenix could say, the fact that this drawing is so lavishly detailed is that there's no way Yaspella could make up this design on the spot, and it has to come from somewhere in her memory? You know, hold on a second. The... the tail, it looks like it has like a bulb on the end and a stinger, almost like a scorpion. And that reminds me of a lot of the imagery in Rouge's bar. There was a big scorpion design on the banner there. I... I mean, I'm still going to go with my logic. It has to be this, logically speaking, by process of elimination. Take that! It is, of course, Espella's drawing of the dragon. It's impossible to draw a dragon with so much detail unless you've actually seen it. When you put it like that, that just sounds so stupid. That's... that's not even photorealistic. It looks like something out of a tattoo parlor. I... Like... I think of all the manga I read with such lavishly realistic art. I... I do not think the late Kentaro Miura has seen dragons in the flesh or other weird creatures, God rest his soul. <laughs> I, I, not, not, and to set aside other artists, like, um... Oh, what is his name? Ah, uh, whatever. My point is, this is stupid. This phrase here, I don't like it. <laughs> Indeed. And it looks very much like the fire dragon we saw this evening. It cannot be a mere coincidence. You can't possibly use that drawing as evidence. And why not? Because she could have just drawn the dragon from this evening. Dad, why don't you believe me? I saw that dragon when I was little. This town is my creation. 
I know everything about it, and I assure you there's no magic. If there is anyone who can tell you what's possible and what is not, it is me, the creator of Labyrinthia. Your overconfidence has clouded your judgment and is preventing you from seeing the truth. What do you mean? In order to see what is really there, you need to reject biased assumptions and keep an open mind. You are overlooking certain facts precisely because you are the creator of this town. It's nothing short of insanity. Magic doesn't exist, and yet Espella says she saw a fire dragon. It seems like a contradiction. But perhaps it is not. Mr. Wright? I yes? The solution to this mystery is out there. We just need to find it. Do you suppose you know where it is? Magic doesn't exist. Espella saw a fire dragon. Where is the evidence that bridges the gap between the two? I mean... Espella was in the bell tower. When she, when she saw it, yeah. But that's really specific. Magic doesn't exist. Espella saw a fire dragon. The evidence that bridges the gap between the two. I mean... Magic doesn't exist outside of Labyrinthia. Uh, Labyrinthia's facade, rather. And Espella did see magic. I would think the, the point that bridges those two worlds would be the courthouse, which bridges the interior of Labyrinthia to the Eldritch Woods, but... Okay, also, Leighton is asking, where is the evidence? The Belfry has already been picked clean. There's no more evidence to be found there, I don't think. The town itself, though? Espella was watching the town burn at that time. She says she saw an enormous fire dragon. Now if you put the two together, I think our best guess is that the dragon she saw was this town itself. This town? In other words, Espella saw a dragon's shape looming over the burning town. How absurd, that's mere speculation. Wait, did I get it right, really? I will not dispute that. However, it is entirely possible to test our theory. What? And how would you go about doing that? It is all quite simple, Mr. Storyteller. We will now go to the Belfry. Maybe we'll find that fire dragon there. Over ten years ago, the witness was standing somewhere around here when she saw a fire dragon. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Layton. However, what was it that you actually saw then? Let us see if we can find the answer to that question. Why not? 
Go ahead and try. But I have warned you that it's futile. You will find nothing here. Well, it happened a long time ago. Whatever she saw might not be there anymore. And if we want to see exactly what she saw at the time, we'll need to set the whole town on fire. Want me to go get matches? I love you, Maya. <laughs> I may be an attorney, but even I couldn't clear you of the charges if you actually committed such a crime, Maya. I will pretend I did not hear that. <laughs> Shall we begin? Let us look for the fire dragon. We can see the whole town from here. Look in every direction for something that would resemble Miss Cantabella's drawing. Yeah, I see a four-legged beast. Looks like more like a dog, though. So it's like... Little kid is spelling with sitting here... And the fire from the horizon, like, illuminated this and made a figure stand out. Sure. Take that! Espella, what do you think? Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like the dragon I saw. Huh, I was right, not right. It seems so, unfortunately. Oh, we're not done. I was just testing the waters. Mr. Wright, a gentleman should admit his mistake rather than try to cover it up with an unconvincing excuse. An excuse? That's what I get for imitating the professor. Huh? Um, Nick, what was that about biased assumptions that the professor said earlier? They're what prevent us from seeing the truth. So let's approach this with our minds wide open. And eyes wide open, too. Really? That was... what? What else could... Like, okay, hold on. Okay. I... Okay, jeez. Well, hey, that looks like, um... A witch? Wait, how, how many... How many sides does this have? The hell? One, two, three, four, five, six? Seven? Eight? Okay, I thought it was four, but... Yeah, that is absolutely more like it. <laughs> Espella, can you have a look at this? It looks like the dragon was hiding in here after all. Oh, this... this is... Hey, that's identical to the one Espella drew. But, um, it's not the fire dragon. The fire dragon was a creature made of flames. It was so big it could swallow this whole tower. This is just some tiny fretwork. <laughs> I guess you could say she was fretting over nothing but dumb tish. <laughs> I think we can consider this mystery solved. I suggest we all head back to the court. I will explain everything there. Is that all right with you, Mr. Cantabella?
What's gotten into Mr. Cantabella? He looks paler than you, w than you do with a cold. I have no idea. Let's follow the others back to the courthouse. A uh, courtroom. The Inquisition's investigation seems to have yielded some unexpected results. But can someone explain them to me? Your Honor, the Inquisition will interpret the results of its investigation. Witness, you said you were about six years old at the time of that incident. Yes, that's right. Did you see the moment the dragon appeared above the town? Huh? No, I don't remember. I remember seeing it at some point. It was like a flash. The town was ablaze and this fiery beast was hovering above it. Then, what you noticed, when you noticed the dragon, the town was already engulfed by flames. Um, yes. That information completes the picture. Miss Kentabella's statement has offered me an insight into the true story of the fire dragon. Over ten years ago, Miss Kentabella was in the belfry, unconscious. What events led to this? Perhaps we will discover that in due course. When she awoke, the whole town was on fire. Having inhaled much smoke, she was still dazed. She was only vaguely aware of her surroundings when she looked up, alarmed by the scorching heat. Unable to stand, she was on her knees. And then, she saw something she would remember her whole life. She saw a terrifying fire dragon attacking the town. She saw it through the fretwork and the balustrade. The shape of the dragon against a backdrop of the town being swallowed up by flames became imprinted in her memory. That is the truth about the fire dragon. So why was Eve on fire? This is what I have deduced. It wasn't... a monster? Miss Cantabella, the illustration you have drawn for us bears an uncanny resemblance. To the fretwork in the belfry, you saw the dragon when you were confused, possibly mildly asphyxiated from the smoke. There was no magic and no magical beast. You believe a stranger, but not your father. That's so typical of teenagers. You should have listened to me. And now that all the mysteries have been unraveled, can we not end this trial and go home? Objection. As much as we'd all like to, I'm afraid it is still a bit too early for that. What else do you want from us? There is just one more problem I'd like to solve tonight. One more? What on earth could it be? Miss Cantabella, we've ascertained that you were in the belfry when you saw the dragon. However, that creates a new question. How did you get there? Oh, I haven't thought of that. Yeah, neither have I. Oh! As expected of an ace attorney, Mr. Wright, seems to have noticed the problem too at last. In order to access the Belfry, you need to use the Bell Tower mechanism. The mechanism can only be set in motion 
with the pendants? Indeed. Miss Cantabella, did you have your pendant with you at the time? I... Yes, I think I did. I always had it with me. But why did I have that pendant? I can't remember it at all. This pendant is not just for show. It's the key to the belfry. Why was she carrying it around? We must also not forget that one pendant does not suffice to operate the contraption. Two of them are required. Two... pendants. Miss Cantabella, are you certain that you are alone in the belfry? No, I wasn't alone. I was there with a friend, Eve. What friend? Meow. Eve, where did you go off to? The friend you mentioned, was it this cat? Yes, she's my best friend. We've always been together. Without Eve, I would have been so lonely. That kitty's always appearing out of nowhere to keep Espella company. Of course she does. After all, Bazella is always accompanied by a black cat. What you saw from the bell tower when you were little was so terrifying that even an adult would have been scarred for life. The town burned in front of your eyes. You thought you saw a fire dragon. You see, your memories have been twisted by the horrors you saw. Oh, what do you mean? The dragon you saw wasn't real, and I suspect that the friend who was with you in the bell tower might not have been that cat. No, it was her. It was Eve, my only friend. Miss Cantabella, the pendant needed to access the belfry is too large for a cat. Are you following? If Eve was with you, it would have been impossible for you to enter the belfry. Oh. W wait. Inquisitor, where is all this going? Yeah, this is the thing the storyteller does not want uncovered. You have no right to tamper with my daughter's memories. You are right, of course. However, neither do you. Nor should you attempt to cover up the truth. Ugh. No, you're wrong. Eve was my only friend. Think about that day again, Miss Cantabella. You went to the top of that tower, bell tower with a friend who also had a pendant. Well then, why don't we have the defense present some evidence? Can you prove that someone was with Miss Cantabella in the belfry that day? If so, I'd very much like to see the evidence. What? Why me? It was the professor's idea. I have nothing on the legendary fire. Why ask me for proof? Hmm. Alright, I suppose you wouldn't have any proof. Not one of us remembers that incident. I've had enough of this, Your Honor. You have no grounds to continue this trial. Well, we appear to have reached a dead end. There is nothing else for us to do. Objection. Time for that photograph. Please hold on, Your Honor. Oh, what is this all of a sudden? Inquisitor Layton. The defense does not have the necessary evidence, but someone else does. What do you mean? This time, the Inquisition will present its evidence. 
the Inquisition will present evidence? Huh? Wait, seriously? You... You son of a witch! <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what you wanted from the very start, isn't it? Well, in that case... The Inquisition shall present evidence that somebody was with Miss Cantabella in the bell tower when she saw the fire dragon. Ah, it's Leighton's inventory, eh? Right. The owner of the second pendant is Darklaw. Have a look. Have a look. <laughs> this is the proof. This photograph shows Miss Cantabella with a friend. Also, that, that beep was me, sorry. Golly, this is... This is the finest illustration I have ever seen. It's a photograph. It looks as if... As if it were a reflection of the real world on paper. Tell me who created this exquisite work of art. Well, Your Honor, I understand you are fascinated, but let us focus on what this picture shows. This picture was found in the Storyteller's Tower. Mr. Cantabella, we have taken the liberty of borrowing it for this trial. It's enough to look away for a second and you already cause trouble. Um, Professor? Aren't photographs against the rules? I mean... This is supposed to be a medieval setting. Meh, who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's important now is helping Miss Candabella to grasp the truth. And in this case, the end justifies the means. Brrr. Please take a close look at the two girls in this picture. Each of them is wearing a pendant. Why, that's so. These are the Belfry Contraption Pendants. We know that one of these girls is Miss Cantabella. But then, who is the other girl? Accused, do you have any idea? Espella, are you okay? It doesn't look like she is. It's... It's... It's me. And... The other girl is... She's... I don't know... Wow. Espella... Your Honor, stop this trial. Stop it right now. Can't you see you're driving a spell into insanity? Objection. It's just the opposite, Mr. Cantabella. If we turn away from the truth now, Espella will close herself to the world forever. Grr. Mr. Wright. Yes? You know who it is, don't you? You know the identity of the other girl in this picture. Um... Is it Rouge? Is it Mia Fey? Is it Dahlia? Eh, I don't know. Is that so, if the defense knows that? Tell us all who this other girl is. Yeah, I wonder. Take that! I'm thinking it's High Inquisitor Darklaw. High Inquisitor Darklaw? I cannot say I didn't have slight suspicions about her, but... Oh my... Miss Cantabella, what do you say? Do you now remember the girl next to you in this picture? 
I was with Lady Darklaw. Is that even her real name? This is crazy. What are you basing this preposterous claim on? B but Mr. Cantabella, this girl closely resembles the High Inquisitor. Resembles? That's just your personal opinion. It's meaningless in a court of law. This is in no way, shape, or form a court of law. This is a LARP. Objection! If you want evidence, I've got it. W what? The definitive proof that the girl in the picture is High Inquisitor Dark Law is. that it's Dark Law's own pendant. And this is the proof it was the High Inquisitor. The pendant needed for that contraption in the bell tower. I have Miss Darklaw's testimony here. She said this pendant was hers. And so... The other girl in the picture is definitely Miss Darklaw. Is it... Is it really... Eve? Where are you going? Oh, hi. Good of you to show up again. I was expecting you, Miss Darklaw. I see that I was not mistaken about you. I trusted in your ability to get this far. I, Inquisitor Darklaw, where did you just appear from? Does your memory not serve you well, Your Honor? You know what I am. I can disappear at will any time I wish to. So, Storyteller, everything has worked out just as you had written, O oh, revered creator of Labyrinthia. Darklaw. Lady Darklaw. Well, she's on the stand now, I guess. Okay. Miss Darklaw. Do you enter the Belfry with... Did you enter the Belfry with Miss Cantabella when you were little? Yes, I did. Then you have memories of events from before ten years ago. I certainly do. Order, order, order in the court. Lady Darklaw, you were with me? Your memories have been suppressed by that man. But, but I was with Eve. Eve, huh? Eve the Black Cat. Yes, she has always been my dear friend. She was by my side on that day, too. What a bizarre coincidence. Dark Law isn't my real name. Yeah, I, I was starting to guess that. It's too on the nose. That is the name of an actor in a role. W what? Then what is your real name? It's Eve. What? What? It you are... Eve? Uh, ah. Eve... 
a speller. My dear friend, Eve. It can't be. That flashback, was it real? Darklaw, why are you doing this? Are you trying to undo everything I have accomplished in the past ten years? No, you have already ruined everything yourself. What is it you want? What I want? My aim is to make the truth known so that everything returns to how it should be. Miss Darklaw? Will you tell us what you remember about what happened back then, more than ten years ago? It would be my pleasure. It was the day of the fire festival. Espella and I went up the bell tower. The wind was strong that day. When the sun had set, the festival began. It's true that the whole town burned down that day. The fire consumed buildings and people, turning them into ashes. We were the only survivors. We stayed in the belfry while the world below us was being eaten up by hungry flames. The legendary fire is no fable. It happened here more than ten years ago. Objection! There are no such things as magic and fire dragons. So how could a whole town be destroyed in just one night? Yes, that's something I'd like to know as well. Even if we assume the celebratory fires got out of control, surely the whole town wouldn't have perished like that. Now it all makes sense. Oh. Now it all makes sense. That was the missing piece of this puzzle. What do you mean, Professor? I can imagine now what transpired that night. What happened in the Belfry and what caused the legendary fire. We have all the clues we need. Yeah, I, I'm thinking they rang the bell. The two kids rang the bell, maybe for fun. Yeah, we just talked about how Espella was unconscious. And when she was roused, half-dazed by asphyxiation, that's how she saw the dragon and the, um, the fretwork. The bell was rung. And the entire town fell unconscious and perished in their sleep. If the Inquisition has evidence to show us, I'd very much like to see it. What caused the legendary fire? I'm going to quick save, even though I'm 99% sure I'm right. Have a look. The, the cause of the fire is in the belfry. It was the bell? That bell had been made by the natives and later sealed underground. It was called the Bell of Ruin. Oh man, this would explain why Belduke freaked the hell out when he saw the bell reappear. The Bell of Ruin. By the way, why does this bell have such an ominous name? Um... Could it be because it's made of pure silver? Pure silver? Exactly. Mr. Cantabella has told us earlier that everyone who lives here has a very peculiar condition. Oh, that everyone who lives here has a very peculiar condition. Yeah. 
This condition makes people fall unconscious upon the sound of a certain metal being struck. And that metal is pure silver. Yes, and we've been told the condition is brought about by drinking the groundwater. Indeed. That bell was also the reason why the original inhabitants of this area decided to forsake it. It seems that the Bell of Ruin caused a devastating disaster. So, like, how did, like, the... How did, like, the original smiths of the bell, like, hammer it into shape? Eh. I don't care. To those who have gained entry into the Sanctum heed our words. You must not ring the Bell of Ruin. I can't help but wonder what disaster this bell has caused. An enormous bell made of pure silver, and the locals with the peculiar condition. It's not too hard to imagine what happened. It was probably the same calamity as the one that happened over ten years ago. And that is? Well, what disaster happened to this town before Labyrinthia was built? Oh! The legendary fire. Now, let us contemplate the following scenario. What would happen if... The Bell of Ruin were sounded during the Fire Festival. Oh! Everyone who heard it would fall unconscious. As it was an annual festival, all the townspeople were assembled in the town square. Oh dear! Therefore, on the night of the Fire Festival, over ten years ago, all the residents instantly lost consciousness when the bell was struck. Oh no! Had it been even just slightly windy that day, the fires lit for the great witch Bezella would have gone out of control. And they would spread throughout the town with no one left to stop them. Because everyone was unconscious. Exactly. That also includes the two girls who are in the Belfry. Espella and I. You were the closest to the source of the sound, so it was inevitable. When you recovered consciousness, it was already too late. The town had been swallowed by flames, as if a fire dragon had come to burn it. That was a calamity caused by the bell. Calamity. You say here that the cause of calamity is the Great Witch Bezella. That night in this very town, Bezella was more than a mythical persona. Be Bezella. She's losing it again. Um, was that supposed is the Bell of Ruin. I can't tell if this is a emulator glitch, but it looks Bezella. cool. No! Yeah, that was probably glitch. <laughs> oh. Be continued? But hasn't every last me uh, mystery been solved? Interesting. Mr. Cantabella. I would like to apologize for putting too much pressure on your daughter. Only your words can bring her back from the brink of madness. Let her hear the truth from her own father.
All according to your plan, Leighton. You've driven Espella into a corner in order to push me to the wall. I had no other choice. Espella, please listen to me. You haven't done anything wrong. You didn't cause that... accident. You have suffered so much thinking that you were Bazella. I must take the blame for that. Y you Mr. Cantabella? I sacrificed everything to make up for what I've done. But all I managed to do was inflict more pain upon others. Is that not so, Dark Law? Now that you are willing to talk, Mr. Cantabella, would you mind telling us your story? Yours, as well as Espella's and Miss Darklaw's. Very well. This story, too, began when I was a young lad. When Newton and I were still youths, full of dreams and hope. As you already know, we discovered the underground ruins. And deep within them lay that ac accursed bell. The Bell of Ruin. At the time, we still lacked the knowledge to decipher any of the writings we found there. This bell is magnificent. It's bound to make the most beautiful sound. I have an idea. Why don't we make this bell the symbol of our town? How do you propose to do that? Let's build a bell tower for it. Then we can ring it on special occasions. Huh, that's not a bad idea. But then it's settled. When we grow up, let's do it. Okay, just don't forget about it. The two of us chose different paths in life. I studied management in London, while Newton devoted himself to the study of the natural sciences. And then you made a fortune following the invention of a new anesthetic. We both got married around that time, and each of us had a daughter. You mean Espella was born shortly after your company gained funding? That's right. So... Can I take that to mean that Dark Law, or rather Eve, is Newton Belduke's daughter? Eve Belduke, maybe? We eventually returned to our hometown and set about realizing our childhood dream. Having built the bell tower in the middle of the town square, we retrieved the bell itself from the underground ruins. We aspired to make it a symbol of prosperity for this un unindustrialized town. The bell was to be officially displayed during the annual fire festival. It would be run in the morning following the night of celebration. Pardon the interruption, but at the time, were you aware of the meaning behind the bell's name? Obviously, we were not. Thinking back to my ignorance at the time, a chill now runs down my spine. Newton and I went to the bell tower the day before the festival. Only one more day to go! We've waited a long time for this. That we have. This town will no longer be the same after tomorrow. The bell weighed so much that ringing it was not easy. We tackled that problem by constructing a special mechanism, which we installed in the belfry. Daddy, I want to hear the bell. Can I make it ring? Daddy, please, let me ring it. 
Espella, who was there with us, was utterly enchanted by the bell. She wasn't a bad child, but she was very stubborn and would rarely listen to me when she wanted something. I told her a story to try and convince her to leave the bell alone. Espella, listen carefully. You mustn't ring this bell. But why? Why can't I, Daddy? You know about Bazella, the witch? Uh-huh. She's an evil fire witch who uses magic to hurt people. If you ring this bell, Bazella will come out and possess you. Possess me? You mean I turn into Bazella? <laughs> Man. That's right, Espella. When Bazella possesses someone, she uses them to do terrible things. That's why you must never ring the spell, sweetheart. I understand, Daddy. What an awful lie. Like, I get you were on the spot, but come on. You brought that bell up there specifically to ring it. Even if Espella wasn't near the bell, she'd still freak the hell out when, when she heard it. <laughs> There's a good girl. The legend of Bazilla has been passed around these parts for centuries. It probably originated from beliefs of the tribes that populated this area in the past. What I told Espilla was just a silly story that I invented for the occasion. It was only meant to stop her from ringing that bell. I could not have imagined that it would have such far-reaching consequences. It's all coming back to me now. I remember that day. Hey, I have an idea. You know how the storyteller, like... His parades would hand out ink with the... With the ink that would evaporate and the scents would waft into the noses of the townsfolk and make them open to suggestion? Do you think that's true of the friggin' storybook about Bazella that was in Espella's room? Was... <laughs> was Espella huffing this ink fume the in her entire life? And especially every time she would read about it, Bazella? Oh, brother. That's probably it, isn't it? It's all coming back to me now. I remember that day. On the day of the fire festival, just around the time when the preparations ended and everything was about to begin. I sneaked out of our house. I took Mum's pendant with me. Your mother's pendant? Do you mean this one? Yes, it belonged to my mum. We needed to limit access to the bell, so we made the two keys. We decided to make them into pendants, and each gave one to our respective wives. Both are needed in order to access the belfry. I saw you and Mr. Balduke use them, so I told Eve to meet me at the bell tower. He says Bazella will come out if I ring the bell, but if I do it just a little... I want to try it while the festival is going on. I hope Eve doesn't forget her mum's pendant. Yeah, bingo. Eve Bell Duke. So it is just as I thought, Miss Darklaw. You are Mr. Bell Duke's daughter. Well done, Inquisitor. I was almost afraid you would fail to make that connection. What in the... This is too much for one day. Uh, order? Order in the court. Lady Darklaw, you mean to say that you are Sir Belduc's daughter? <laughs> well... Too much for one day, indeed. This is a fine place to end things. I think, um...
So... Are now we gonna be like, oh, Eve's motivation for trying to betray the storyteller is that the whole charade and the stress of it all caused her own father's suicide? Well, not caused, but drove him to it? Is that Eve's big motivation? Like, I'll admit, I do like where this is, what has been covered today. All this about the impression of the, of the, um, the fire dragon and the asphyxiation and the smoke and the silver bell, but... I like the explanation for why Isabella believes that she is Bezella. I like the explanation for the fire dragon from the legendary fire. But right from out of the gate, the premise is just... Oh man. I don't think this can, like be salvaged I don't it's already lost me completely I for this video and the last one I did the whole time I record it I just feel empty I no longer have a vested interest in in this story. Like, don't get me wrong, we're so close to the end, of course I'll see it through. But I don't care anymore. I... Like, I'm trying to see all of this. The... the... Labralum and... the witch fakeness and the... shade fakeness and... The whole experiment and the contracts and everything, just everything. I'm trying to look at all of it. I assume there are people out there who are down with this twist and are fine with it or even like it. But as much as I am trying to put myself into other people's shoes... Yeah, no. I just... can't. I... cannot see any angle of looking at this... whole... thing... where I would like it. It's just not for me. I don't... I just don't like... all this. I really do feel like there was potential for a satisfying climax finale here where it kept true to the internal rules presented us to a, pre presented to us even from the very intro cutscene of this game. Maybe Bezella is real. Maybe Espella really is being possessed by Bezella. Maybe Dark Law was trying to find some way to exercise her. And uh, I, I don't know. what The what ifs, man. The what ifs. The could have beens. Uh, just. Yeah, I do think we're like two or. Th one or two videos away from the grand finale, so. Definitely looking forward to that, if only because I I quite would like to finish this series before Baldur's Gate 3 comes out. I do want to make videos on that. Um, and I would like to upload those in the release window. Um, if need be, if this series here does go on quite a bit, I'll just upload 
Baldur's Gate videos simultaneously, you know? Uh... And don't get me wrong, I, I still have full plans to, after I finish this, to finish my playthrough of Dark Souls 3, the Convergence mod, and once that's done, move on to the next Ace Attorney game. Um, it's just that I'm adding in a little bit of Baldur's Gate. It's not, it's probably not going to be a full game playthrough, just, just a few videos on it, you know. Um... But, uh, yeah, overall... It just, uh... God, I was in so much love with this game. I was just in so much love. I adored it. I feel like the rug was swept out from under me, making me fall down flat on my back. And now I don't feel arsed to get back up on my feet, if that makes sense. I have been Charlie Brown, trying to kick that football. <laughs> Arg, good grief, and all that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been the near finale of Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. Thank you for watching, and hopefully... I'll catch you next time, so until then, please take care.